required an extra 1.3 million workers to help rebuild a country shattered by five years of war. The labor shortage was so acute that the government had already shown itself willing to take extraordinary measures. This folder details a government recruitment scheme that was set up in April 1947 by the Ministry of Labor and the Foreign Office. And rather romantically, perhaps, they called it Operation Westward Ho. This operation and other schemes like it had brought over 180,000 new migrant workers to Britain. Now, unlike the men and women on the Windrush, the people who are described in these documents weren't British subjects. Most of them couldn't speak English and few of them had any cultural ties to Britain. But the key difference, at least in the minds of policymakers, was that these people weren't black, they were white. They were known as European Volunteer Workers, or EVWs, and they consisted of displaced persons from the Balkans, Italy and Yugoslavia, ethnic Germans who before the war had lived in Central Europe, and ex-prisoners of war from Germany and the Ukraine. And among these were thousands of former members of Waffen SS regiments that stood accused of war crimes on the Eastern Front. At its most extreme, it was government policy to give preference to men who had fought against Britain over men who were veterans of British forces, and all because those veterans were black. And whatever their backgrounds, these Europeans were not only here to work, they were here to stay. Today, new faces come to Littleborough. They are displaced persons. A party of 40 girls get a real Lancashire welcome. It's in another file that the racial thinking that operated within the government machine is laid bare. Written more than three months before the arrival of the Windrush, it's a warning circulated within the Ministry of Labour by Sir Harold Wiles, a high-ranking civil servant. Wiles writes that the EVWs, the European Voluntary Workers, who are being brought in are coming definitely for permanent settlement here, with a view to their intermarrying and complete absorption into our own working population. Whatever, he goes on, may be the policy about British citizenship, I do not think that any scheme for the importation of coloured colonials for permanent settlement here should be embarked upon without full understanding that this means that a coloured element will be brought in for permanent absorption into our own population. 